Got your Bible with you this morning? Amen. Amen. Turn to the book of John. <clears throat> I live so thankful. Oh, my, my, my. For the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For the Lord. I was thinking about that song earlier that they used to sing, and I guess they still do. I just don't hear it much anymore. Lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And that is our goal today. It's not to draw people to this church as much as we would love for them to come to this church. Amen? It is to see people drawn to Jesus. Amen? And saved by the miracle working power of our Savior. Amen? Our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John, the fourth chapter. We're going to start in the third verse, if I can preach. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I've already got my bucket full this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. John, the fourth chapter, the third verse. He, speaking of Jesus, left Judea and departed again unto Galilee. Verse 4 says, and he must needs go through Samaria. If you write in your Bible, you can underline those words, he must needs go. Because that is the crux of our message this morning. He must needs go through Samaria. Now that term, he, that, that term must needs in the Greek means it was necessary, it was binding. It behooved him. It was needful for him. He should, he ought. He must. Why? Why did he need to go through Samaria? Now if, depending upon which scholar you read behind, which commentary you read in, a lot of writers will say that he didn't have any other choice but to go through Samaria because Samaria was between him and his next destination, so he had no choice but to go there. But I beg to differ with that, and not just me. There are a few others that do. I believe he could have went around. Yes, it would have been more trouble. Yes, it would have taken more time. But we have to remember this morning, the Samaritans were not friends with the Jews. He was about to go through enemy territory. The Jews didn't care for the Samaritans. The Samaritans didn't care <clears throat> for the Jews. Amen? Amen? But the Bible says he must needs. It was necessary. It was binding. He had to go through Samaria. And if we continue, which we will, to read this chapter this morning, we will see exactly why it was needful for him to go through Samaria. Amen? Hallelujah. We, we, we could say this morning that he was going through enemy territory, like I told you, because they weren't friends, not the Jews and the Samaritans, but he went out of his way. He went out of his way to get in somebody else's way. Amen. We will see very clearly this morning that he went through Samaria at the time that he went through and stopped at the place that he stopped at for a specific purpose. Amen. It was ordained of God. It was ordained in the Spirit that he must needs go. He must needs go through Samaria. It was binding. It was needful. It says in verse 5, Then he cometh, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, jo now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, found him a shade tree to sit under. That's not what it says, is it? Found him a, a rock to sit where there was some shade trees where he could get some rest out of the sun. No, the Bible says that he was weary in his journey and there was a well there and he sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour. It wasn't the seventh hour. Had it been, she would have missed him. It wasn't the fifth hour. Had it been, she would have missed him. He wasn't sitting under the shade tree. Had it been, she would have missed him. But this is the reason he went through Samaria and sat down on the well. Because there was somebody that had an appointment to meet Jesus. 
There was some, why did he must needs go through Samaria? Because there was a little woman that had been looking for all of her answers in all of the wrong places and she needed a savior. It didn't matter that she was Samaritan to Jesus. Amen. But yes, he came to his own people first and they refused him. Amen. But he also came not only to the Jew but to the Gentile. Amen. And it was his purpose to go through Samaria to park himself on the well in Kentucky we would say. Here she comes to the well. Let me read where she gets to the well. There cometh a woman of Samaria. I'm in verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. From where? That well. Who was sitting on the well? Jesus was sitting on the well. Amen. Here in Kentucky, you would say he was smack dab in her way. Aren't you glad that one day God got in your way? Amen. You might not have been looking for Him. You might not have been searching for Him. You might have been traveling down a road where God was the furthest thing from your mind and all of a sudden there He was. Either by way of just the Lord dealing with you or a preacher preaching or a song that you heard but God got in your way. Amen. I'm glad that God got in my way. Jesus gets in the way of the Samaritan woman. Here she is going to the well just like she's done day after day with her water bucket. She would pack that to the well every day and she she would get her water out of the well and she would take it back home, probably carried it like this. She would take it back home and she would use that water and the next day she would come back. Amen. The Bible doesn't say nothing about Jesus knew this woman, had any idea of her schedule. Of course, we know that he knew. He knew he would be there. He knew she would show up. Amen. And here's she comes. She leaves the house just like she did every morning. Every day. Gotta go get some water. I'll be back. Same day. Same routine. Same well. But today would be different. Amen. Aren't you glad that one day you got up and something was different? That day didn't end like all the other days, Sister Teresa. Amen. That day didn't end with you putting your head on your pillow and not having peace and unable to sleep because Jesus got in your way on that day. Amen. And you met the Master. Hallelujah. She's about to meet the Master, Brother Rodney. Aren't you glad that God got in your way? Hallelujah. I'm glad this morning that He got in my way. Amen. And He will go out of His way to get in our way. He didn't have to be here, but he was. Any other time, any other place, she would have missed him. Here we see the real reason why he must needs go through Samaria. The real reason he must stop at Jacob's well and sit down. He could have sat down somewhere else, folks. Even if the writers who say, well, it just happened that he came through there because... He had to come through there. There was no other choice. He had to come through there. Yeah, but he didn't have to be there at the sixth hour. He didn't have to be sitting on that well. All of that was ordained. Amen. And if you think all of that was coincidence, I've got a beach house I'll sell you in Buttonsbury if you're interested after church. These things just didn't happen. But God had set these things in motion. Jesus must needs go through Samaria. And at the time, whenever the Bible says that, I don't know exactly how the timing went. But we could imagine this morning that maybe here Jesus is. He turns to go the route that he's going to go. And while he's doing that, she's getting out of the house. Getting her water bucket ready. Amen. And she's coming from that way. And he's coming from this way. And the two would meet. And she would never be the same again. Hallelujah. He must needs go through Samaria because there was a little woman that needed to know Jesus. There was a little woman who needed a Savior. There was a little woman who was looking for her answers in all the wrong places. Did you know there is a world full of people outside of these doors this morning that are looking for their answers in all of the wrong places? Did you know there is a world full of people out there today that are looking for something they cannot find in the world? They cannot find in religion. They cannot find in politics. They will only find in Jesus Christ and what He has done on the cross of Calvary. Amen. There are people today that need Jesus. There are people today that need Jesus. He must go through Samaria because there was a woman there that needed a Savior 
Oh, hallelujah. Do you see that this morning? There was a woman there that needed a Savior. There was a woman that came from Samaria, and she came to the water to draw well. And the Bible says, Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. So if you wonder why here, why now, this is why. Because the little woman. I was asked uh, this earlier last week, I think it was. It might have been the week before. I think she called me the week before. Somebody from Box 2 Radio Network, the radio station that we're on in McDaniels. They have several transmitters in different places, but they were doing their fall share the end of this past week, and they asked if I would call in on Friday morning and, and, and talk over the air for a few minutes and encourage people to give. And I will tell you the same thing this morning that I told those listeners Friday morning. The same reason that he must, we must today. Amen. The same reason that Jesus must go out of his way into an uncomfortable and inconvenient spot is the same reason that we must continue to take the gospel to the world, continue to be the witness that we're supposed to be, continue to be the testimony that we're supposed to be, continue to be the light that we're supposed to be. He must go through Samaria because there was a little woman there that needed him, that needed a Savior, that needed to know Jesus. We must continue to do the work of the Lord while it is day before night comes because it's coming, amen, because there is a world out there that needs Jesus, that needs a Savior, that needs hope, that needs peace. They're looking for it in a a bottle. They're looking for it in alcohol. They're looking for it in a syringe. They're looking for it in religion. They're looking for it in sex. They're looking for it in the pleasures of man. But the only place they will find it is in Jesus Christ, this crucified one that we must, uh, we are compelled to, we must. It is a necessity. It is binding this morning that we as the people of God show the light of Jesus to the world and point them to a hill. Not a man, not a, some worldly man in a collar, not some church with a steeple on top, not Mary, not some religion, not some dogmatic uh, 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 made up a thing written by a man instead of written a book written by the Holy Spirit, written by the hand of an unholy man. Instead of those things, we need to point them to Jesus Christ and Him crucified because that's the only place they'll find what they're looking for. Amen? That's the only place that they'll find hope. If you're out there this morning and you have no peace of mind, I can tell you where to get peace of mind. Amen? And it is in Jesus Christ. Christ and Him crucified. If you're out there this morning and you have no peace, I can tell you where to find peace. And you can find it in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross of Calvary. Amen. The same reason that He must. We must this morning. It, behooves, it, is, it is binding for us as the people of God. He didn't save you and fill you with His Spirit. Just so that you could come to church on Sunday morning and not let anybody know that you're a Christian. I've said this before, I'll say it again. You can credit it to me because I never heard anybody say it before I did. He didn't save you to seat you, He saved you to send you. Amen. And not just the preacher, but the body of Christ to be the witness that they're supposed to be. The same reason He must know needs to go through Samaria is the same reason that we today must continue to preach the gospel. Is the same reason that we today must continue to witness to others. It's the same reason that we today must continue to be the light. It's the same reason that we today must continue to do the work of the Lord while there is time to do the work of the Lord because somebody needs to hear about Jesus. Like this woman, there's a lot of people out there today that are looking for their answers in all the wrong places. Amen. We see here that Jesus went out of his way to reach this woman. This was not a convenient place for him to be. Amen? Amen. This was not a comfortable place for him to be. But he had to go there in order to reach her. Did you know we see all throughout the word of God that he went out of his way to get in the way of others? Do you remember the parable? Where he said that the man would leave the 90 and 9 and go after the 1. Amen. Yeah. Now, you could say, well, I still got 99. I only lost one. Oh, but not him. His love for the 1. He knew the 90 and 9 were safe. And he knew that one of them wasn't, Sister Sharon. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. And that little sheep out there wandering in the darkness. The shepherd. We can get him. 
Oh, how the shepherd went out of his way. Probably went into uncomfortable and inconvenient places to find that sheep. Amen. We see it again on the backside of the desert in the life of the man by the name of Moses. Amen. Hallelujah. The last thing he expected to see out there on the backside of the desert was a burning bush and God to speak from it. Amen. But God went out of his way to get in Moses' way so that he could call him to do the work of the Lord. God will go out of his way to reach the lost the question this morning is, will we? Amen? Oh, I could plow corn this morning. I said the question is, is will the church? Oh, we might do it if we're comfortable. We might do it if it's convenient. Yeah, but will we do it when it's not convenient? Will we do it when we're not comfortable with doing it? Amen? Will we do it when the Holy Spirit nudges us? Uh, or there's a crack that the door's open to crack? Will we step on through and tell somebody about Jesus? Will we go out of our way to get in their way? Like Jesus got out of His way to go in this woman's way. He must needs go. We must needs go. There is a world that is lost and dying without Jesus. And it is our responsibility to be a witness. You can sit there this morning. You can sit out there this morning and you can say that's the preacher's job. Let me share a real spiritual word with you. Bull. That's bull. It is every born again believer's job. He said, let your light so shine before men so that they will glorify, see that your, your, your light and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I messed that up, but you know what I'm talking about. You be the witness. Amen? You be the witness. I wish the church could get a hold of that. <clears throat> Jesus went out of his way. Amen? Oh, and like I said, we might do it if it's convenient, if we have time. Amen. You run into the store to grab a loaf of bread, you're in a hurry, you're already behind. And you see somebody that you know is going to want to talk and you're like, oh, uh-oh. Now, I ain't the only one's ever done this, I know. Amen. Amen. I could tell you his name. <laughs> I ain't going to, uh-oh. There he is. I won't never get out of here because I don't have time. Amen. If we're too busy to tell somebody about Jesus, we're too busy. If we're too busy to pray, Brother Jim, we're too busy. If we're too busy to be a light to those that we come in contact with, we are too busy. And if the only time we do it is when it's comfortable or when it's convenient, we will reach very few people. Because more times than not, it's not convenient and it's not comfortable. It wasn't convenient and comfortable for Jesus to come through Samaria, but he came through Samaria because there was a little woman that he had to reach. Amen. Here this woman is coming to the well just like any other day except this day would be different. Today there he sat. Not under a shade tree. Not somewhere else, but right there in her way. He will come to you where you are. As a matter of fact, if you're out there this morning listening to this sermon by radio, He's coming to you through the words of this frail and pitiful preacher. He's getting in your way this morning. Story after story of people can tell you, they wasn't thinking about God. But all of a sudden there he was. Amen. Even if they had been thinking about God, they pushed off conviction and they pushed off the thoughts. They were carrying on their ungodly lifestyle, but there was God. He got right smack dab in their way. First street meeting we ever had was out here at the trailer park. We needed some way to get power because we needed the sound system. There was a mobile home that sat there. It was the closest one to us. And I went over there and I knocked on the door. And I said, excuse me, sir. We're going to have a revival service out here in this field. And I was wondering if we might could plug into your outside receptacle here. See, I didn't know the Lord already been dealing with this man. I didn't know the Lord already been trying to get this man to come to him. And he told me later, he said, here I've been putting the Lord off. Here I've been pushing him off. And then the Lord knocks on my door. Amen. And church sets up right in my backyard. And before that meeting was over, him and his wife both came down to the altar and gave their life to Jesus. Amen. 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 He will come to where you are. 
And he will use us, his people, to do it if we are willing to go. Amen. Somehow or another, we got in with some folks that I think we met them through the Greenville Church of God or maybe Drakesboro. And they lived in Clayton, Kentucky. Now, if you've never heard of Clayton, Kentucky before, if you've been around here for a long time, you know Clayton, Kentucky is not a nice place. Amen. Only stories I ever heard about it, Brother Jim, were not good ones. Somebody, this woman, I can't remember her name, I can almost remember, she said, will you come and hold revival in my backyard? And she lived right smack dab in the middle of Clinton, Kentucky. Amen? I'm telling you this morning, God will go out of His way, hallelujah, to get a hold of you and to get in your way. He will use His people, hallelujah, in uncomfortable and inconvenient places to present Jesus to others if we will let Him do it. We said, sure. Brother Bill said, Clinton's a rough place. Of course, he wanted to go. I wanted to go. He's just saying, Clayton's rough. Amen. We talking about a place where you might see somebody laying in the yard. You thought they'd passed out for a few days. Come find out they'd been stabbed in the back. But anyway, we went and we set up the equipment. Those old drunks sitting out there on their front porches every night of the revival, as we was preaching, as we was singing, I know that there were some people that God had dealt with their hearts, but they wouldn't come to church. They wouldn't come to where he was. They wouldn't come to where the, where the Lord was at or where the, where the house of the Lord was at. So the Lord had to send somebody in an uncomfortable place, uh, in an inconvenient spot to, to go right where they were at. One night I'm up there preaching, giving an altar call, Brother Jim, and the bushes in the back start rattling. I thought, uh-oh. Two old drunks come running out of those bushes and came down and knelt down at the altar and called out on Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, he must needs go and we must needs go this morning. Hallelujah. We must needs go. It is our responsibility. It is incumbent upon us. He must needs go through Samaria because there was a little woman that needed Jesus. Brother Jim, you must needs continue to give out those cards. You must need continue to witness to those people. Reese, you must need continue to be the light where you're at. Brother Rodney, Sister Sharon, Sister Teresa, Mama, me, anyone else that's out there under the sound of my voice, we must continue to share Jesus with others because it is needful. There are souls that hang in the balance. The most important thing today is the work of God. Now listen, I ain't talking about building your multi-million dollar Mega church with its, what's that coffee place? With the Starbucks in the foyer, amen? And a cafe for the members to get together and have breakfast. I'm not talking about that mess. I believe that the Bible says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say go ye into all the world and build mega churches with fancy things, amen? It doesn't say go ye into all the world and build an amusement park. It doesn't say go ye into all the world and build these big compounds and complexes. It says go into all the world and tell them about Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. That's what we're commissioned to do. The most important work today, the most important thing for this woman in her life was not that she get water from that well. As important as that was, was that Jesus would be sitting there that day. Amen. Was that Jesus would be sitting there that day. I was talking to a man one day in the store. It's been several years ago now. And he stood there and he told me about everything that had been going on in his life. And he was doing this and making money and he was doing that and making money. And I just stood there and listened. Being polite. When he was finished, I said, okay, now I want to talk to you. Every bit of that is worth nothing if your heart is not right with God. If your faith is not in Jesus Christ, if you have not been born again, every bit of that is fruitless, hopeless. It will do you no good when you stand before God. If all of these things are keeping you so busy that you have no time for God, one day you will have time for God. Everything else will be passed away and you will stand there before Him unsaved, undone. And He will say, I never knew you. And you will spend eternity in hell. Amen. The most important thing today is do you know Jesus? Let's read on. i got to close. I knew this morning that I was going to be wound up. 
Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Where are we at? Let's, let's read verse 9. We could read the entire chapter, but we're not going to. Now, there Jesus sits, and the woman has came, and he says, uh, could you give me something to drink? And then the woman saith, then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. Now, remember, I told you that before. This was not a, this was not a comfortable and convenient spot to be, but it was needful that Jesus be there. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence hast thou, whence, from whence then hast thou this living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Now he's about to give her the message that he came to give her. Amen. Whosoever shall drink of this water, that whoever shall drink of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's the message this morning. Amen. You can drink of every well that the world has to offer like we preached about last week, I think it was. You can drink of all of those wells, but you will continue to thirst until you get a drink of Jesus, until you come to the well this morning. This is why he must needs go through Samaria. This is why we must needs go into the world and point them to the fountain of living water. Point them to the way. Point them to the truth. Point them to the life, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He said, if you'll drink of this water that I'm offering you, you will never thirst again. Hallelujah. And the rest of the story, we can read it. He reads her mail. He tells her to go and get your husband. She says, I don't have no husband. He says, you're right. You've had five of them. The man you're with now ain't yours. Amen. Hallelujah. She begins to realize that he was more than a man. Amen. She begins to realize that he was more than a man. Hallelujah. She, she realizes in this, and you can read the rest of it. I'm trying to close. You can read the rest of it later. She realizes that this is the Christ, the Messiah. Amen. She realizes. She comes to a saving knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Oh, how, that's the most important thing today that you know. Amen. Like I told you earlier, it doesn't matter that you don't know all the Hebrew names uh, that they used for God in the Old Testament. It doesn't matter if you don't know all of the ins and outs and all of the fancy things. As long as you know Jesus Christ died on the old rugged cross for your sins and you put your faith in Him, that's enough to get you from earth to glory. Amen. You don't need a college degree to get into heaven. You don't need money to get into heaven. You don't need fame to get into heaven. All you need is faith in the crucified one. Amen. You just need to be blood washed and blood bought. Born again. Hallelujah. Oh, look over at your neighbor and say, yeah. look over at your neighbor and say, it's good preaching. Good Hallelujah. My, my, my. That's good preaching. But I hurry up. She realized he is the Messiah. The Christ. She believes. And what happens next? Look down. Go all the way down to verse 28. I told you I'm not going to read it all. We'd be here all day. Verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went away into the city. And went away into the city. And listen, we see Jesus at the beginning of the story. He must needs go into Samaria, which was uncomfortable and inconvenient. This woman is about to do something that is uncomfortable and inconvenient. They didn't have a lot of respect for women back then. They still don't in some parts of that country. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We know better over here in America. Hallelujah. Maybe they don't have wooden spoons and iron skillets. <laughs> but we know better over here in America. But they didn't have much respect for women. She's going to go into the city and tell the men. That's not going to be very comfortable. And that's not going to be very convenient. 
But once she found out that Jesus was the Savior, the furthest thing from her mind was her water pot. It was a valuable thing to have one. It was important. You had to get your water with it. But she left it behind. She runs into the city, Brother Brennan, and she begins to testify. Amen? Listen to what it says. Uh, lost my place. Where am I? And the woman, verse uh, 28, and the woman left her water pot. She went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man. Come see a man which told me all things I ever did. Is not this the Christ? That's the message this morning, Brother Jim. Come see a man. Oh, hallelujah. Come see a man that saved me. Come see a man that delivered me. Come see a man that healed me. Come see a man that died for the world. If you'll turn to him in faith, believe it. Come and see a man. Hallelujah. The little woman runs into the city and she tells the men. She begins to witness and testify. Huh. Strange concept, isn't it? Somebody that got saved went and testified and witnessed to others. Amen. Strange concept for the church. Oh, now, if it's convenient. If you feel comfortable. If you're in a crowd you're comfortable with, you might bring up Jesus. This was not convenient. This wasn't comfortable. She was a woman. They were men. They didn't know Jesus. They might have said, this woman's stupid. She's out of her mind. Christ the Messiah has not came yet. But she runs. She is so excited. Glory to God. I found the answer. Amen. I found the answer in Jesus. So she couldn't keep it to herself. Can you keep it to yourself this morning? If you can, you need to find your spot and pray and say, Lord, help me to share you with others. Amen? I realize some people's bashful, some people's backwards. That's why there's tracks and there's cards and there's things that you can leave here, there, and yonder. But if I was you, I'd still pray, Lord, give me the boldness to tell them myself. Amen. Give me the boldness to say, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Somebody notices that you're happy. Somebody notices that you got peace. Tell them why you're happy. Tell them why you got peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't point them to some man-made stuff. Point them to Jesus Christ, the peace giver. Point them to Jesus Christ, the boy, the one that makes you happy. Does he make you happy this morning? Amen. He makes me happy this morning. He's given me joy this morning that is unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. He's, he is the answer. So Jesus must needs go through Samaria, and now she must needs go and tell the people of the city about Jesus. Amen. Uh, come see a man. Let me tell you about Jesus. The King of kings is he, the Lord of lords supreme throughout eternity. The great I am the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of kings is He, the Lord of lords supreme throughout eternity. The great I am the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a sad thing to say, but if you talk about Him enough, you won't be avoiding them. They'll be avoiding you. That's the truth. Amen. Oh, but they're going to hear about him. Why? Why? Because they need him. Amen. He is the Savior. He is the great lover of man's souls. He is the great price payer. He paid a ransom. He, he paid a debt. He didn't owe because we owed a debt that we could not pay. Amen. He ransomed us unto himself. He opened the door and said, Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life. There are souls that hang in the balance. This woman at the well, her soul hung in the balance. Those that she would go into the city and tell about Jesus, their souls hung in the balance. We see people every day 
God. We see people's hosts, people with souls that are hanging in the balance. We need to begin to pray, Lord, open up the, the door, make an opportunity. Let it be to where I can be a witness, where I can be a light. If you begin to pray that, I guarantee you, if you begin to pray it, the people will begin to ask you. The Lord will begin to open doors. There will begin to be opportunities for you to tell people about Jesus and what He's done for you. Amen? Because that's what matters. Not what religion can do. Religion will bind you. Religion will put you in chains. Religion will make you feel miserable as a, as a harlot on the front church pew. But Jesus will give you life. Jesus will give you peace. Jesus will give you hope. I still believe Jesus is enough this morning. Amen? I still believe that Jesus is all that we need. Hallelujah. He's more than enough. Y'all about to preach me to death. Hallelujah. Listen to this. She runs into the city and she testifies. Come see a man. Amen. Come see a man who told me all that is not this the Christ. And the Bible says in verse 39. Go down to verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman which testified. Many of them believed and were saved because had a big revival and a famous preacher came. Listen to me. You remember I told you that this was an uncomfortable and inconvenient thing for this woman to do. Do you remember what Jesus told her? She'd had five husbands. The one she was with now was not her own, so she didn't have a spotless record. I'm sure some of those men thought, Psh, who is this? We know who you are. We know what you've done. You've had more men you can shake a stick at. Floozy. When I was growing up, you hear hussy. Amen? So it wasn't very, you know as well as I do because she's made out of the same dirt and mud that we are. The devil probably said on her way there, they ain't going to listen to you. They ain't going to listen to what you got to say, but she didn't care whether it was comfortable or whether it was inconvenient because she knew they needed what she just got. The world needs what we got. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I got it. I got it. I can't explain it, but I got it. So she goes and she tells him, and the Bible says that many of the people in the city, many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. They believed why? Because of her testimony. You can be a witness to people. Say, Brother Billy, I'm not called to preach. You're called to testify. You're called to be a witness. Amen. Many believed because they went. Listen, and then many believed. We'll read that many believed because they went and heard his word themselves. This is what it says in verse uh, 41. And many more believed because of his own word. Listen to what they said to the woman. And said to the woman, now we believe. Not because of thy saying. In other words, not because of your testimony. For we have heard him ourselves. And know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Why did they even go out there? Why did these people who were in Samaria and they were doing their own stuff and they were doing their own, they were going about their own lives, why did they even go out there? They turned to this woman and say, well, we believe and we're saved, but not because of your testimony. Oh, yes, they were. If she hadn't have went into the city and testified, they wouldn't have even known that he was out there at the well to go and listen Amen. to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. So for them to turn, see, this shows you their attitude toward women. They turn to her and say, we believe, but not because of you, woman. But because we heard him ourselves. Yeah, you hypocrite. You heard him yourself because she testified to you first. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if you testify to somebody and it feels like to you that it fell on deaf ears, you might have just planted a seed. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody else going to water and God will give the increase. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I may have told something that ain't easy Hallelujah. to do. You can be a part. Whether you're giving in the offering, whether you're witnessing, whether you're handing out tracts, whether you're spending time in prayer for the lost, all of that is a part of reaching the lost. And we must needs reach the lost. Who's going to reach them if we don't, church? Who's going to pray if the church don't pray? 
Who's going to be a light if the church ain't a light? Who's going to be a witness if the church isn't a witness? Because he must, we must. Amen? We have been commanded. Listen, this is not a, uh, a request. We have been commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you can preach in a lot of different ways. We, we tend to tie it in with just the preacher behind the pulpit with his tie. And he's screaming and hollering. Or he's standing there like this. But anyway, if you can preach more than that. Your life is a sermon. Amen? The way you live before people. Hallelujah. Amen. And he also said, go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Now, you might do that by way of radio. You might do that by way of TV. You might do that by way of street meetings or, or outside camp meetings. But you also do that as you get up from eating your lunch, wherever you ate your lunch, and you leave a track that says Jesus Christ is the only way. Or do you know Jesus? Or what if you died today? A lot of good tracks you can get and plant a seed with them. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm closing. Look over at your neighbor and say, I don't know about that. Hallelujah. Jesus went out of his way to meet with the woman. The woman went out of her way to tell the city. Amen. And we see souls being saved. Are we willing today to go out of our way? To get out of our comfortable zone? To get out of our inconvenient spot? To pay attention to the preacher even when there's weird noises going on. <laughs> to keep preaching even when there's weird noises going on. Amen. Are we willing today, are we willing to go through enemy territory to tell somebody about Jesus? To witness to somebody about Jesus. Because Brother Brennan, the only hope for anybody is Jesus Christ and what He did for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. That is the only hope. Just like the little woman said to those people in Samaria, come see a man. That needs to be our witness today. That needs to be our testimony today. Amen. As we go out those doors, as we go into stores, as we go into uh, during, uh, with our everyday lives, we need to be that light. Are we willing to let our light shine in a world that is full of darkness? Are we willing to go through enemy territory to tell somebody about Jesus? Are we willing to go through some a, a situation that is uncomfortable, a situation that is inconvenient, to tell somebody that Jesus Christ is the only way, that Jesus Christ is the only life, He's the only truth? If you're out there today under the sound of my voice, and you have not already figured out what the message is. What we have to offer you today is Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God who gave His life on the cross of Calvary so that you would not have to go to hell. You may say, preacher, I'm not good enough. Preacher, you've got to wait till I overcome these things. till I get better than I am because I'm a bad person. Hallelujah. The only kind He can save are bad people. Amen. Hallelujah. The only kind He can save are those who admit that they are lost and they are in need of a Savior. If you turn to Him in faith believing, the Word of God says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We present to you today not religion, but Jesus Christ, who finished the work on the cross of Calvary. If you'll put your faith and trust in Him and keep your faith and trust in Him, He will save you. The Bible says if we'll confess with our mouth, if we'll believe it in our heart, you can say this prayer or one like it. It doesn't have to be these words, but you do have to believe. If you'll say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you were buried and on the third day you rose again. I believe that you're the way, the truth, and the life. If you will believe that, He will save you. Amen. If you will believe that, He will save you. And because He must, we must. Amen. We see time and time again where Jesus went out of His way. If I had time this morning, I'd tell you one more example, which I think might be the greatest example of all. Imagine, if you will, this morning a man that has lived a life of crime who has lived a life not to be proud of, to be ashamed of. And I believe as with all men, at one point or another, the Lord dealt with his heart, the Spirit strove with him, but he turned him away. He rejected, he walked away. Probably more than once. 
But now he finds himself at the end of his life. No doubt believing it's all hopeless now. It's all, it's, uh, it, there's no way, there's no hope. And as he is there, breathing his last breaths, he hears the voice of a man that says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he looks over to the man that's hanging on the cross beside of him, and he realizes it's not too late. This is the Jesus that I've heard about. This is the Jesus that I've heard testimonies about. And he turns to him and says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Even on the cross, Jesus was saving souls. You're talking about inconvenient. You're talking about uncomfortable. But even there, he was there as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world and this thief that had ran from God finds himself face to face with God in the most unlikely spot that you would imagine because everybody knows that all those people being crucified on those crosses are criminals they're bad people except for one that day and his name was Jesus and Jesus didn't turn to him and say I'm sorry it's too late He said, this day you will be with me in paradise. He will tell you the same thing today. Not in those exact same words, but he will tell you it's not too late. And you can spend eternity in heaven if you'll put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. And because he must, we must. Amen. I hope I got that across to you this morning. Somebody else have something before we go. Hallelujah. I'd like to make a testimony. Okay, testify, brother.